This episode of the Totally Rad Show is brought to you by the National Campaign Against Drunk Driving. Today on TRS, we check out the new stop-motion animated movie, Paranorman. Totally Rad Show. Today in movies, we are talking about Paranorman. Paranorman is from Leica Studios, who did uh, Coraline previously. This is not from the director, Henry Selleck, who did Coraline and um, Nightmare, Nightmare Before Christmas and all mm. those. But it's, uh, it's from a directing team, uh, previously worked on movies like uh, Flushed Away, The Aardman, yep. mm-hmm. and um, and uh, Blanking Tale of Despero. I never saw that. I didn't need a little mouse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did it's on HBO every once in a while now. Or like right, or right on, right on. Um, so Paranorman is about a young boy, an outcast, who can see dead people and zombies are coming to town. He's and the only one that can stop it. And he's the only one that can stop it. Mm. So bur- in the suburbs, it is a, it is a mashup of... The th- movies that we grew up with, like Goonies or Monster Squad or The Explorer, I mean, has the spirit of all of those wonderful 80s movies. Mm. Um, and it's stop motion animation, like mm. like yeah. uh, Coraline and, and, and some of the others that we mentioned. Uh, Alex. Yes, sir. So, a movie made for us, made for our mm. generation, not even the generation that is in the demographic that sees movies today, 18 to 24. This is this is for us. I think it's also for kids. It's also for kids. For sure. But I, I'm talking about... <clears throat> yeah. It's of our sensibility. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I had a blast. I really liked this movie. It took a little while for it to sort of... for me to kind of get to a place where I was like, oh, yeah, like when it started, I was like, ooh, I don't know if I'm... I don't know if this is right. I don't, I'm not really, you know, digging on it. But then... Within the first five, ten minutes after that, I was like, oh my god, I'm so in. This is so much fun. It's really fun. It's got a great heart. Um, Not only that, it's got, in the first, like, the third scene of this movie is Norman waking up in his bed, bedroom, and he's a big zombie fan. And there are products that are in this movie that I need to be made into products that I would wear. You know what I mean? There's, like, zombie like zombie slippers that yeah. just are the head of a zombie with its mouth open and you force your foot in the mouth and then walk around with that. You know what I mean? Like an alarm clock that like a, a hand comes out of a grave and it's like, Bruh! and then you push the hand down to, to, to snooze. Like there's, I was just like, I want all of these freaking products to exist so I can buy them all. Um, and the story is really, is really fun and funny and sweet. It's got a little bit of the sort of <laughs> Scooby-Doo odd couple team in a van moments and um, you know the sort of partnership between Norman and the little pudgy friend that he makes is hysterical when he shows up and wants wants to play hockey it was like the funniest thing that I've ever seen Uh, so there's a really great and the story is 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 actually a cool take on the kind of you know lore of the you know, creepy curse on the town, blah, you know what I mean? Like, it kind of goes to a place that you're like, wow, this is kind of a really interesting and kind of poignant place to go as a sort of stop-motion kids movie. So I had a blast. I loved it. Could not agree more. It's great. Um, yeah, I, I, everything you said, I completely agree with. The performances that they get out of those kids is pretty yeah. great, especially that little friend. I hit, They really did a great job casting. They really did a great great job getting wonderful vocal performances out of those kids. And I adore stop motion animation. And this movie also in 3D. I saw it in 3D. Did you saw it in 3D, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this just works so perfectly for 3D because it's it's already like looking at a little diorama world, which I love. But now that you can peer into that diorama and it seems more like the movie screen is just this place where these living models are hanging out and moving around. It really works well. It adds such wonderful depth and three dimension. I I would venture to say that Leica is almost too good at stop motion because all the lead up to this movie, I thought it was CG. I thought the whole film was CG because they are so good at the stop motion that you don't see the herky-jerky, even a little bit of it anymore. Yeah. It is so fluid and so magical. And when you realize that it really is puppets physically moved by people one frame at a time, 
it, it is, I just wanted yeah. to stare at the movie the whole time. That's funny. And they, you know, we, were, we saw some stuff about this at, at Comic-Con, and they pulled off in this movie, I think, some of the largest number of characters in any one scene. There are these huge crowd moments oh, yeah. uh, in the movie that are, it's incredible the amount of, a, a detail and and movement that is happening, these big action set pieces that they do. It's it's stunning to behold just on a pure artistry level that is completely detached from the story of the movie that mm. I would recommend people go see this even uh, separate from any of that just to gaze in awe at what they were able to accomplish. And then on top of that, it's a really fun, charming, lovely story yeah. that is that is funny and and interesting and has great adventure. And really, as a kids' movie too, they do something that I think movies used to do a lot more and have gotten away from. And most kids' movies now are just sort of wacky joke, 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 gag movies. Mm -hmm. But what they used to do, and what this movie does so well, is it's not afraid to scare kids. It's not afraid yeah. to go and be genuinely scary, yeah. and then be funny, and then be heartwarming, and then be feel like you're safe with these characters, and then scare you again. And it, it really does a great job of mixing up those beats so that um, you're, you're never wallowing in one place for too long, it really moves and flows, and the characters are, are fun. It's a great, great movie. Yeah. I, I My only thing is it doesn't, it feels like a Halloween movie. I wish it had come out oh, in the yeah. fall. Yeah. I don't understand, it doesn't feel like a summer Movie yeah, to me. I agree. I think this would do much better during Halloween. Yeah, hundred percent. But interesting point. Is it so? I had a little trepidation before uh, uh, and seeing tra trailers and things mm -hmm. about it ever rising above just the send ups of tropes that we all know and love from these kinds of movies and references to. Ghostbusters, or this or that, or the it other. I don't it think it wallows really, in that. No. Certainly not as much as your average DreamWorks CGI movie yeah. does. You know that. And it definitely t turns its turns on the head. The whole story. I mean, the, it, it's not about what you think it's about until mm. you know what it's about. And yeah. what it's about is not something that we've heard before. You mm. know what I mean? So it's it's it's. I, I don't. Th it's not just that. You know what I mean? Awesome. And there isn't even that tons of. Winks to lightsaber sounds. No. <laughs> there isn't even tons of like winks to there movies really like that. You know what I mean? It's just it's it's from the feeling of that. Right. You know the what spirit I mean? of it, the soul yeah. of it. But it's not, not like they're the... Goonies jokes or like a G Ghostbuster joke. It's, it's more like, like a jokes on what zombies are. I mean, there's even this wonderful uh, flipping the script of humans having such an excitement about the idea of being able to kill zombies at yeah. one point. It's, it's like, mm. yes, zombies are finally here. Now we can do that thing we've been fantasizing yeah, about yeah, for yeah. so long. Let's go yeah. kill them. Yeah. And, and then you sort of start empathizing with the zombies a little bit, yeah. which is really, it's a really fun, awesome. clever take. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's really, it's really fun. Definitely worth a watch. Paranorman. Boom. All right, everybody, be sure to stick around. We're going to be answering one of your Twitter questions right after this. But first, we want to thank our sponsor. Guys, we talk about this, it feels like, almost every year. And I can't believe we still have to talk about I'm, this. I'm glad we talk yeah. about it, though. I mean, it needs to be talked about It more. is. We are sponsored by the National Campaign Against Drunk Driving. The police will be out of, in force again nationwide from August 15th to September 3rd in a nationwide effort to crack down on impaired driving. Don't put yourself or others in danger or risk of terrible legal repercussions. Drive sober or get pulled over. There's some stats that they always have us read and they always blow my mind that I can't believe that people don't understand these stats and then use them to stop driving impaired. Young adult drivers ages 18 to 34, year old, 18 to 34 are particularly at risk over Labor Day weekend in 2010, 54% of young drivers killed in motor vehicle crashes were alcohol impaired, uh, a blood ridiculous. alcohol content of, of uh, 0.08 or higher. That's 54%. So sad. It's like half the people that were killed could right. just not have been killed. And 0.08 so. is... is uh... That's the legal limit, and yeah, that's yeah, the legal limit. So yeah. don't drink and drive. Hmm. Uh, record numbers of state and law, local law enforcement are gonna be uh, uh, out in force across the nation taking part, and uh, they will be looking for drunk drivers day and night. As if you uh, needed more incentive. I not know, to do it. right? So lose your license. Make the road safer for all of us. Do yourself a favor. Drive sober or get pulled over. Seriously. Cool. Hey, send us backgrounds. We love getting those. Fans at totallyratcho.com is where you send them. We <laughs> this one's a great one. Come on. 
what's going on. <laughs> Check us out tomorrow for our review of Expendables 2. Today's Twitter question sent in with the hashtag TRSQ sent in from Abdul Paniagua at King Abdul. Oh, it's King Abdul! <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> Uh, wow, what toppings make the watching, crust? King. What what toppings and type of crust make up the totally rad pizza? I can what tell you what makes up the totally bad pizza: <laughs> mushrooms, tomatoes, and pineapple. Well, that's the yeah, problem right. is that we, we are can't. In, yeah. We can't have a cumulative pizza because my favorite totally things good. are mushrooms, tomatoes. I wouldn't put well, pineapple. Well, first off, but... tomato sauce, so that's fine. That's because I'm You're a tomato guy and I love tomato sauce. Okay. Uh, what type of crust? Let's start there. I, thin, I enjoy regular. thin crust, but I always enjoy thin crust as a novelty. True. I really like just the standard, yeah. regular When it's like meat and potatoes, but, but, uh, pizza. But a, um, yeah, terrible I, pizza. Definitely a firm Actually, it's very crust. very good. Meat and potatoes? Firm. Firm, yes, firm. I, 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 what chef I like once a told little me, bit of a puffy crust. If a, a pizza, you know a pizza is good if you can pick it up and it doesn't sag. Oh, oh so I don't it's know not, if I You're such an East Coaster, I would have thought you would have said the opposite. Yeah, I like where I have to like fold it up like a laundry. New York style pizza is like... I don't know, oh, Chicago big pizza? I'm not a big Chicago Shit. South pizza. Good. It's gotta be I the thin. I'm all, I'm all, I'm, we can, okay, we're on board with oh, yeah. uh, firm. Standard firm, firm pizza. Now, next step. Toppings. Uh, we're not gonna do margarita, we're gonna do tomato sauce. Yeah, tomato sauce. Lots of cheese. Lots of cheese. I can do a couple different types of cheese, like mozzarella, yeah. and then some like, jack or some, you know, yeah. Yeah. Parmesan yeah. or whatever. Right. You know. I'll, I'll grant you that. Five uh, cheese, some sort of five cheese combination. Yeah, yeah. I don't or do the, the beef. Formaggio. So we can't can't really do beef related items. Not that there's that many. Well, pepperoni. Pepperoni. It's pork, which is good. Right? Yeah, I could you do some pepperoni. Italian sausage. The, pro the problem with this question for me is I, like, I don't like I don't a ton of, of, like of toppings. I like a ton of toppings. Because then it's like I'm like I black olives. I'm, I'm a cheese guy. Black olives, or bell pepper, onions. Yeah, I would eat all. I that. I could do all of that, but as long as they were pepperoni. Let's order one, guys. Yeah, I'm coming. Actually, could go for that. Thanks, thanks, King Abdul, the king of pizza maker.